It is finally time to review Helix at Liseberg. This is one of the most well-known European coasters and a competitor for the best roller coaster in Sweden and the rest of Scandinavia. Hold up! I think it's fair to say you've been living under a rock if you're a coaster nerd and you don't know this coaster. It's a very iconic ride known for its huge layout hugging the hill that Liseberg is famous for. Over the years, opinions of this ride have become more mixed like a complicated cocktail, so here's my take on this big green boy. I visited Liseberg and wrote this coaster for the first time in July of 2023. And let's talk about what this ride actually is. I'm a big man. A big, big man. Helix is a Mach Rides launch coaster model. The model that kicked off Mach on the thrill coaster market back in 2009 with Blue Fire Mega Coaster. Then they opened a more family friendly version in Manta and then the Helix, which is a relatively big jump in quality and ambition. This does not feel like it's only the third coaster of this model. I guess Mach's quality curve with looping coaster was steep as hell. It opened in 2014, five years after Blue Fire, and at the time it was Sweden's longest and fastest coaster, and only the country's second coaster at the time to have inversions, which Kanonen carried like a chad for years before Iowa brought it back to life later. Although you might say that Insane has inversions too, but shut up. Helix has 20 rider trains over 10 rows and 5 cars. The trains feature lap bars, which are incredibly comfortable restraints, similar to Mach's other thrill coasters. Wonderful for feeling free and getting out of your seat and you're raised a bit as well so you get thrown around just a tad more it's 134.5 feet tall which is only the fourth tallest in sweden after wildfire valkyria and lisa Berg banan what Nani? it's 4530.8 feet long which is sweden's longest coaster and it goes 62.1 miles an hour which is sweden's third fastest also after wildfire and valkyria unfortunately not the psycho this time it's got a ride duration of 1 minute and 15 seconds from the first drop out of the station until you hit the final brake run. And that is a very long ride, and it feels it as well. For the thrill coaster with good intensity, this is really up there for ride durations. It's got 7 inversions throughout the layout as well, which is my personal record for number of inversions on a coaster I've done, now shared with Ride to Happiness. Mighty Lords. And it's a quite unique set of inversions too, which we will get into soon. First though, we gotta talk about how how this ride looks. It's not that easy being green. If you look at this coaster in real life and say that it doesn't either look good or impressive, I don't trust you. The way it wraps around the side of the hill is absolutely breathtaking. It looks so photogenic and simply just astonishing. It has so much interaction with the other rides, which you experience both on ride but also when you look at it off ride, and it basically covers the entire length of the park, which is insane. The colors are also wonderful, this very dark pale green that blends in so incredibly well with the trees and bushes all around it. Dude. And the main green supports are really cool and sort of Lisebeck's image color at this point since they use that on other rides as well. But the way it blends in with the nature, I mean Helix is the mountain. It's one of the most picturesque coasters I've ever seen and when it becomes night it even lights up with cute little headlights which are so fantastic, I love it. Plus the green lights on the side of the car, I mean it just looks badass at night. Y'all gonna be playing clocks by Coldplay in my head now. Absolutely spectacular looking attraction. Backdrop of Gothenburg certainly don't hurt neither. What a setting. Helix doesn't give a shit. Slow roll onto a launch pad. Nah. Chain lift till before a drop. Forget about it. Even a slow rolling inversion for hang time. That's not good enough! Now it goes into a steep drop right out of the station with flojector airtime. Something Mach did in an upgraded version years later. You're tossed right into the action, especially in the back row where you will gain speed in the station and get thrown out of your seat with a strong tingling sensation in your stomach. <laughs> it's a really good drop for airtime. The front is fun too, for a bit of forward hang time and honestly this is a top 15 first drop for me, it's awesome. Then you go into the first inversion, the most normal of the two corkscrews on the right. Ride. And no matter where you sit, you'll get a solid amount of hang time on this. It goes through it pretty slowly, so you really get to hang out of your seat and really get to feel what this ride is going to offer later on. Very nice inversion. Then there is this elongated section, which it just has so it can really wrap around until the first launch. The turnaround into the launch itself also has a slight bit of force, but not really anything particular. It absolutely meanders over there, and the launch itself doesn't help much either. At this point, I think we all know how laughable the launches are on Helix. Absolutely.
absolutely some of the worst launches I've experienced, although they are not forceless. You can still feel when it kicks in, and you still feel a slight push in your back. So it is not a forceless launch, it is just very weak. <laughs> then you head into the big corkscrew on the ride. This is my least favorite inversion on the ride, but nonetheless it is still pretty good. There's not a lot of hang time, but you do get a slightly weaker whip into it and out of it as well in the back row, and generally it's just quite a floaty inversion. This turn here has some nice positive forces, and it leads into a twisted camelback, which is where the airtime truly begins outside of the first drop. This camelback has some nice ejector airtime. I would say it's weaker ejector, but ejector nonetheless. And you get a nice little whip towards your left with some laterals in it as well. It's also better in the back, although not by a whole lot. You swoop down the mountain and get a bit of positive forces, and then reach the one double inversion on the right, the massive Norwegian loop, or pretzel loop. Soft pretzel. Whatever fizzles your soda. It begins as a dive loop where at the top it is very floaty, not particularly intense though. And going out of it in the Immelman inversion is also the same thing, very floaty, not a lot of laterals or anything. The real shine of the Norwegian loop is in the middle part, between the two inversions, in the valley, because that might be the most forceful part of the ride. You get great positive forces in this Norwegian loop. You get properly pushed into your seat here. Then you dive under these Bergbanan, get a bit of positive forces, and then head into the first big camelback. And this is an amazing airtime hill. You get some awesome ejector airtime. <laughs> And when you've just been diving under the track of Lisa Bergbanan, it is absolutely incredible to just go into this massive element and just get an awesome view from the top of it while flying out of your seat. And of course, it is sustained as well. Then there's the Zero G roll, which is one of the best inversions on the ride. It is reasonably whippy and very floaty near the front. There it has some solid whip and some solid floatiness, but it's in the back where it really shines, because in the back row, you get whipped very harshly out of it. One of the best whip moments on the ride, although not the best because right after the zero g roll comes a twisted dive and this is the whippiest moment on the ride you get ejector airtime in this element and you get absolutely yanked to the right this is the kind of element that really butters my croissant then you go into the helix la mau and it's also one of the most forceful moments on the ride very good very sustained positive forces through this entire helix while you're so low to the ground it heads into an overbank and a 180 degree turnaround you don't really get any force in this section it's Nothing. And it's really just to get you over to the second launch. Now the second launch is weaker than the first, but once again, it does not feel 100% forceless. I've heard so many people say how this launch feels like you're just gliding along straight track, but in my back I could still feel it hook onto that launch. And I could still feel that there at least was something pushing my back. So I refuse to call this a 100% forceless launch. I refuse. <laughs> but that being said, it's still weak as fuck. You hit the inverted top hat, which is also one of the best inversions on the ride. In the front row, you really get pushed up into it and immediately experience some awesome hang time at the top, which is sustained all the way through it until you level out. In the back row, it's the exact same story. You go up into it, then you experience some awesome hang time, but in the back row, you also whip out of it. This transition right here gives you a great pop of lateral forces and was also quite a surprise to me. And then you head into the biggest camp Camelbank and the ride. First of all, what a view. I mean, this view, fantastic. Second of all, this Camelback really reminds me a lot of the first Camelback on Conda because of how good it is. You get some awesome, strong, very sustained ejector airtime on this Camelback. And especially in the back row, it feels like it goes on for longer than it's supposed to. By the time that your mind thinks, okay, the airtime is gonna stop now, it just keeps going. <laughs> It is such a long airtime moment and it is so strong. And in the back row, it even gets stronger throughout the hill. It is a phenomenal airtime moment. And that's why it reminds me of this bitch. And it's also my favorite element on the ride. And Pontus's. This element behind us specifically, I think, is my favorite. And Pontus as well. It is. So I think that speaks volume. Then there's this very fast-paced turnaround here, where you'll also feel the greatest sense of speed on the ride and some amazing positive forces as well. Then you have this zigzag section. Now I love these kinds of elements. This one in particular doesn't really do anything. You feel little to no lateral forces on this at all, but it's still fun. I don't know, there's something about this worm wiggling here that I just really like. There's another 180 degree turnaround in the helix of the Zbergbanan, which is also not very forceful, although there are some positive forces. And then the final inversion, which might be my favorite inversion on the ride, and that's the hardline roll. I love good hang timey hardline rolls, and this one is right up there with the best. It is very, very hang timey. <laughs> 
And with those lap bars, it is amazing. This is a fire inversion. Fire! And then there's the final brake run, which is so incredibly gradual, by the way. Helix has a big, long layout with a shitload of elements. It may be a launch coaster model, but honestly, it feels like it's built like a hyper coaster because of its sheer size and some of those airtime holes and other elements. Yeah, it's definitely big, all right. I just wonder if it's too big, you know? Which, when I think about it, makes a lot of sense considering that that was the original idea. It sort of feels like I've now ridden an unofficial Mach Hyper Coaster, but hopefully an official one will come soon. Make up yo damn mind. Helix pacing is interesting. On one hand, my five-year-old brain is entertained and having a blast throughout the entire layout. On the other hand, the ride certainly builds up the intensity and sometimes takes it away again. You do start off with that teeny mental drop like a slap across the face and then it's pretty casual from there. The elements are good, but it doesn't feel like a world-class thrill coaster until you reach the point right here. From this moment on, especially in the back row, by the way, I should really say that this is absolutely 100% a back row ride. Anyway, from that moment there, your boy feels peak until this sad section here. Although it is scenic and there's a big bunch of anticipation being loaded like a gun right here until you hit the inverted top hat. You're just staring at that thing going, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And then the ride is not just peak, but peak peak, I guess, through the next three elements, then some more chill stuff, and finally a banger of a final element. I think it's safe to say that Helix pacing really goes up and down like a roller coaster. I don't deserve to breathe. It lacks consistency a bit, but as I said, I still have fun through the entire layout. In that way, it is very similar to Terran. Absolutely has a pacing problem, but not a massive important one. Pacing is far from horrible on Helix, but certainly interesting. But when it comes down to it, I don't care. Dead spots and shite pacing don't really kill rights for me. Nothing to see here! Ya boy is a smooth boy. It's about as smooth as Blue Fire, coincidentally. Coincidence? I think not! And that's pretty good. You're not free from a minor shuffle here and there, and feel Feeling a wee bit of rattly vibrations, but they're minor and extremely normal for a steel coaster. As someone prone to headaches on rides, I had absolutely no issue in the slightest with its smoothness. It's completely fine. I know some people <coughs> have complained about it before, but if you ask me, you shouldn't have the slightest worry. In fact, and yes, I'm gonna say it, it's easily smoother and way more comfortable than the ride to happiness. Till next time, enthusies. This is a computer. Helix theme is. I don't know. It's not terribly easy to figure out what theme this some bitch has. I think the best way to describe it is green. I've heard people say it's themed to the Helix game, which is a mobile game where you could like win fast pass tickets, I think. I don't fucking know. But I couldn't even download the damn thing on my phone during my visit, so my day was automatically ruined. That theme would make sense though. Helix does sort of feel laboratory like, high tech, if you will. There's the lights, of course, a lot of futuristic vibes, and of course, green. But it also feels very industrial. The Q line is especially. It feels like a massive construction site. There are so many elements here in there that feel like they're just slapped down. In a lot of cases, they look like maintenance stuff, but I think it's on purpose. Of course, there are the famous trash cans as well. Gotta mention those. Garbage day! It's also important to mention the soundtrack, which is very high-tech and futuristic. <laughs> And together with the logo, they both give a huge Matrix vibe. I mean, look at this concept art as well, it's literally the Matrix. But regarding the soundtrack, I think Mark put it best. I need that soundtrack in my ass. Yeah. Writing is not enough, I need that in my ass. It's a really good soundtrack. The theme is definitely a bit of a puzzle, and I love it. There's something really intriguing about the theme. The station's atmosphere is great, especially at night with the lights and the soundtrack plays all day as well. The front car looks amazing as well, and also has a bit of like, I don't know, it has, it has a pattern. To summarize the theme, I have no no idea what's going on, but I can't get enough of it. It's absolutely epic. Now to summarize the entire ride, I love it. First ride in the front row left me a tad underwhelmed with the forces, but the second ride in the back sealed the deal for me. I literally just stayed back there for all my rides the rest of the day, because it was just that much better. It's an amazing layout with so many different things on offer, a few incredible airtime moments, some absolutely fire inversions, great whips, several places, and also not lacking intensity overall, and I think it's important to mention that it's really balanced with the forces. Force-wise, it feels like it's really been scattered all over the place, like the same 
same amount of really high intensity positive moments, whip moments, airtime moments, etc. Really well balanced. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. It's smooth too and has one of the most epic locations of any ride I've done. You're so close to other rides and there's so much interaction with them. And the same goes for the terrain and the nature and the view of Gothenburg. It is magnificent. This place is magnificent. So for Helix final rating, I'm gonna go and give it a 10 out of 10. One point away from the highest 10 plus score I can give since it isn't a perfect ride, but it manages to leave me not caring about its small issues one bit. When it comes to a big thrill coaster with lots on offer and where layout and location shine together, this is right up my alley. Very similar to a certain other Swedish ride, Helix is fantastic. It's definitely very hyped up at this point, so I get that some people are a little underwhelmed if it's a little overhyped, so don't take my word for it. Go in with open expectations and let me know what you think about Helix in the comments below, or any other mock launch coaster of course, or I don't know, just a launch coaster. <laughs> just write me a comment, okay? Bye! <laughs>